Today I'm talking about the top five secondary service connection claims you can file secondary to tinnitus. I've made a couple other videos talking about how to est establishing service connection as a talk about regularly. Check out this playlist right here. And uh, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna assume that you have a 10% VA disability rating for tinnitus. You need to have tinnitus service connected at 10% in order to hook secondaries onto it. So I have it, you probably have it. If you don't, get it service connected, then come back and do this. 10% is a very low rating, the VA does this. A lot of low ratings, orthopedic conditions, tinnitus, especially all the problems tinnitus causes. So we file secondary VA claims to pump those numbers up. If you're not familiar with secondary VA claims, stick with me. Secondary VA claims are money. Speaking of money, my boot camp's also money. Check it out, links in the description. Let's start with anxiety and depression secondary to tinnitus. This means that your service-connected tinnitus causes you, right, you have this first, it causes anxiety and depression, or pick one. They're both mental health ratings. If you do this right, you can take your 10% rating for tinnitus and hook a 70% rating for anxiety, depression. There's about 50 different mental health conditions that could get hooked onto this. You're going to need a current diagnosis of depression. You're gonna need your symptoms accurately reported like on a disability benefits questionnaire. And then you're going to need the nexus, the link between your current disability of depression that you wanna file a claim for and how it relates to your service-connected tinnitus, ringing in the ears. If your doctor won't do this, here's an email address to my med team. They will help you. Your doctor is the only one that can do this. You are not qualified. You're not a medical professional, so you can't diagnose yourself. I mean, you can talk about symptoms a little bit, but you can't write the nexus either. So it's better to just have a doctor on board to do this for you, especially with secondary claims. Generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD, is rated under diagnostic code 9434. There are six ratings available to you, mental health ratings. 0, 10, 30, 50, 70, and 100%. So there's a total of six, and how accurate you are with your symptoms and how accurate your doctor is with your symptoms, and then how the VA reader says it and how the CNP examiner actually jots it all down. That's where you get your rating from. 70% rating for anxiety or depression. That's what we're going after here. A 70% mental health rating means you have deficiencies in most areas of your social and your work life. They call it social and occupational impairment. So you have a couple divorces. You have problems with your boss. You have problems being around people. All these things, you know, you, you hide in the basement like I do and you just don't go out. All these things may be true and they're true for me, but I also have a doctor saying that's what's going on with me. So, you know, being aware that this is what's going on with you, that's a start, but you need a doctor to say and actually check the boxes on the DBQ. Disability benefits questionnaire. Migraines, secondary to tinnitus. This means that your service-connected tinnitus that you already have drives you so nuts, you probably already have anxiety and depression from it, file that claim, but you might also have headaches, right? So you didn't have those. You didn't have tinnitus or migraines before you went in the military. You picked up tinnitus in the military. Then a couple of years afterwards, 10, 20, whatever it is, that's why secondary claims are money, money, money. You develop migraines out of the blue. Get your doctor to say, hey, his migraines are caused by his tinnitus. You're going to need to prove it. You need a medical doctor to prove it. Here's the email address. My med team can help you with it. Migraines are rated under diagnostic code 8100. And for that matter, all headaches. There's lots of different headaches. So they're all rated under diagnostic code 8100. And there's four ratings available for you. 0, 10, 30, 50%. So we're going after the 50% rating here. If we're going to file secondaries, we might as well get paid, right? So this means that once a week, it causes you to lay down. Prostrating is what they call it. And severe economic inadaptability. 
you need to have weekly and prolonged prostrating events. So that means that they cause you to lay down, they put you out. And it's not like, you know, a couple seconds, right? Like you're at work, the auras come, the halos come, you need to go crawl into a under a desk somewhere or in a dark spot, and you may be there for five hours or two hours, prolonged and prostrating. And they need to severely impact your ability to work. So this happens at work, and it happens regularly, like once a week. That's a 50% rating for migraines. And then you could hook migraines secondary to tinnitus. Meniere's syndrome or Meniere's disease secondary to tinnitus. Your service-connected tinnitus caused Meniere's. So it's a uh, imbalance, it's vertigo. You're all off balance basically, right? Meniere's disease. If you have like weird vertigo off balance, like you stand up and you feel like you're sideways, you should go get checked out for Meniere's disease anyway. It's miserable from uh, what I understand. Meniere's syndrome is rated under diagnostic code 6205. There are three ratings available for you for Meniere's disease. 30%, 60%, or 100%. The rating I most often see is a 60% rating for Meniere syndrome. And, you know, this means that you have hearing impairment with attacks of vertigo or balance issues one to four times a month. So basically, you know, once a week, maybe twice a month. This is the 60% rating. If you have Meniere's syndrome, you should keep a log of it, kind of like migraines. You should keep a log of this so you could document how often you have these events. Um, they're helpful for when you're getting rated and just so you know, so you can communicate with your doctor. Uh, again, this is a secondary condition to tinnitus. You need a current diagnosis, current symptoms, and a nexus. The nexus is the relationship between the two. If your doctor or your VA doctor won't write the nexus, they don't know how, my med team can help. Here's the email address. It's also in the description. Also, we're talking strategy here, right? So get into my boot camp. Are you in it yet? Combatcraig.com. Links in the description. We can talk strategy. Somatic symptom disorder secondary to tinnitus. Your service-connected tinnitus causes so much unexplained pain in your body. This is what somatic symptom disorder is. You're like, wake up. If you do wake up, I have some. I have a diagnosis of this, so I know what it's like, and I have chronic uh, fatigue syndrome. So, like, you weigh. Should I get out of bed and experience pain, or should I just lay here and be in the pain that I am in? Because I don't know how much worse it's going to get. That's kind of what a uh, somatic symptom disorder is. It's also kind of lifestyle impact claim. So this is another mental health claim right? 0, 10, 30, 50, 70, and 100%. 70% mental health rating is what I most commonly see. Somatic symptom disorder is rated under diagnostic code 9421. And if you already have a mental health rating, like if you're working the anxiety and or depression or somatic symptom disorder, you only need one of them. All of these are heavy hitter mental health claims, and you can only get one rating. So you only need one of them for a 70% rating, so pick one. Do you have anxiety? Maybe you're already service-connected for it or you thought about it. You don't know what a somatic symptom disorder is. I just learned about it, you know, three years ago when I started this channel. So this may be new to you, but at the end of the day, you're only going to get one mental health rating, and we're going for 70%. Sleep apnea secondary to tinnitus. This means that your service-connected tinnitus caused or aggravated your new disability, which is sleep apnea. So you need a sleep study. You probably already did that. You went to the VA, you got a sleep study, and they prescribed you a CPAP machine. So you have the diagnosis and you have the symptoms. That's the, the CPAP machine addresses the symptoms for a 50% rating. You need the nexus. Again, med team can help. They need to explain the relationship between sleep apnea and tinnitus. There is a relationship, and about 70% of veterans with tinnitus, this is one of those sleep issues. 
Insomnia is another one. So, and there's a lot more people that have sleep apnea than because they're it's expensive test, right? You have to go do a sleep study. They go watch you and hook a bunch of stuff up to you, and you know you're there for eight hours. It's expensive. I've learned that a lot more people have sleep apnea than we know, like, you know, as humans in this country or world, uh, but we don't even know about it. And so whatever, it's a sleep disorder, kind of like insomnia. Insomnia can be a symptom that also can fit into a mental health rating, but we're talking about a sleep apnea diagnosis, CPAP machine, Nexus, med team can help, 50% rating, secondary to tinnitus. There's four ratings for you for sleep apnea claims, 0, 30, 50, and 100%. CPAP is an automatic 50. Daytime hypersomnolence, daytime sleepiness is 30%. Doesn't really bother you, is 0%. If you get prescribed a CPAP machine, that means it's serious. The VA proposed to change this and tinnitus actually last year sometime, but the proposed changes haven't gone through. So I can't think of a better time to file this claim and tinnitus if you're not service connected before they make the changes. This is the government. They're not here to help. Don't know where this whole thing sits and how they're, you know, deciding it, but the VA is going to get their way. They always do. Just like when they remove the DBQs, just like when they remove ratings when you're 100% permanent total, when you had it for five years, 10 years, if you're over 55 years old, they've been caught doing every rule you could think of, they break. So they're going to get their way one way or another. There's going to be a negotiation in Congress or something. So file the sleep apnea claim now. Let's take a look at all these secondaries. And we're going to use the sponsor of today's video, Hill and Potton, to do this, right? So you start off with a 10% rating for tinnitus, and then we're going to start stacking secondaries. So the way this works on this calculator is you start with the bilateral factor first. If you have, you know, a if your left arm or shoulder is service connected and your right, that's called the it's both sides. It's called the bilateral factor. So you calculate those first, and then you go highest to the lowest. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stick a few of these into the calculator and see what it looks like. So tinnitus is obviously going to be the lowest rated claim here, so that'll be last. So the top of the heap, most common, 70% mental health rating. All right, since we don't have a bilateral factor in this at all, we're just going 10% for tinnitus. That's going to be our last one. We're going to put in 70% for mental health. This could be anxiety, depression, somatic symptom disorder, or any other mental health condition that you get service-connected, right? So then we're going to add in a 60% rating for Meniere syndrome, right? So 70 plus 60. We're not using normal math. This is the combined ratings table, aka VA math. Then we're going to add in a 50% rating for migraines or a 50% rating for sleep apnea. Either one of these will get us to 94%, as you can see here on the calculator. And then we add in our 10% rating for tinnitus, 94 plus 10, one more point, 95. 95 rounded up, hundo club. So this is how you could take a 10% VA rating for tinnitus all the way up to 100% rating just by filing one, two, three secondary claims. That's it. You only have to keep track of three things for the rest of your life, defender rating. It's easier to like just file high value secondary claims instead of like 20, you know, zeros and tens. So this is how you do it. 10% rating for tinnitus. That's your anchor, your primary claim, your direct service connection claim. 70 for mental health, 60 for Meniere's, 50 for migraines, 50 for sleep apnea. Pick one of those and then your tinnitus. That puts you at 95%, round it up to 100, you're 100%, you're now done. Now all you have to do is protect your rating and you only have you know four conditions to be checked at until the day you die or until the 20 year mark where they can't take it away anymore. You need to appeal your VA claim, check out Hill and Potton at hillandpotton.com, see if they can help you out. Also, if you're at Camp Lejeune between 53 and 87, you may be eligible for additional benefits. Links for both of those are in the description. Don't forget to sign up for my boot camp if you want to learn more about my process, which is 
the VA claims process. You're going to need medical evidence to win your VA claim. If you're missing a diagnosis, severity of your symptoms, or a nexus, and your doctor won't do it for you, send an email to Second Strata and see if they can help you with your missing medical evidence.